Hello, beautiful people. I hope everyone's doing well and uh, you're getting better. Uh, everything's improving with the economy. And so I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about uh, confusing times. Some of you have reached out to me telling me about uh, what's going on with your uh, trying to get employment and law enforcement and your college degrees and there's a ton of things. So I figure I'd take a few minutes to kind of just go over a few things as your professor. Uh, some of you have noticed that I just uploaded a, a Zoom lecture to my uh, YouTube channels and the reason was that uh, they're having us kind of get rid of some old videos uh, from our Zoom accounts or they'll be deleted and so I decided to put it on my Zoom or my uh, YouTube video and for some of you who are not enrolled in college there's an opportunity for you to uh, watch these uh, college lectures for free that's right free best things in life are free right okay so let's talk about confusing times uh, we are going through some confusing times and uh, what I mean by that is the news media is bashing the crap out of law enforcement I mean they are doing their best to just scare the heck out of people, that's you, uh, into not applying for law enforcement, into not becoming police officers, deputy sheriffs, other uh, type of police department support personnel. And uh, I gotta tell you, I hope that you listen to the words in this video and you recognize what is happening, right? What is happening? So, uh, you know, we have social media everywhere right now, right? Everyone records everything. You have information at your fingertips, and uh, it's been happening for years. It's not just like it just started. It's been happening. So whenever something happens, somebody captures it on uh, YouTube, they put it on YouTube, and, and the whole world watches it within a day of it happening, maybe sometimes within hours of it happening. So people have created an addiction for news, an addiction for this adrenaline rush. You know, oh my God, right? And so, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you guys do this. You, you, you just, uh, you re realize, you, look, you watch a YouTube video, you like it, then you watch another YouTube video, and then before you know it, half the day is gone, right? Yeah, anyway, so let's get back to confusing times. This is also creating an opportunity for you if you want to get into law enforcement. Why? Because the weak ones, the people who are intimidated by all the news media, they are simply going to go away. They're not going to apply for law enforcement agencies. They're gonna go get a job at a warehouse and that's what they're gonna do. So what does that mean for you? Well, there's fewer applicants applying for more law enforcement positions. Additionally, there's a bunch of uh, retired officers leaving the force, going away, creating new positions. There's some officers that, you know, maybe they, they weren't a good fit for that department, and they decided to just walk away. They're afraid that if they continue doing what they're supposed, what they had not, you know, weren't supposed to be doing, that they're going to eventually get caught. So, boom, those people are getting scared away. So, this creates opportunity for you, right? This creates a big opportunity for you. It creates an opportunity for you to apply to these law enforcement positions. Fewer applicants, more jobs equals opportunity. So, if you ever wanted to be a, in law enforcement, whether it's support staff, evidence technician, crime scene technician, uh, crime lab person, whatever, this is the time to do it. So these confusing times are actually leading to opportunity for you, right? Don't be the, the, the freaking sheep. Don't uh, follow the flock. I was uh, reading some comments from one of the, uh, my mentors on uh, Instagram, Robin Sharma, and uh, he was saying, don't follow the flock, which is another uh, way of saying, don't be a freaking sheep, don't follow the herd, right? You gotta find your own way, you gotta create your own opportunity, you gotta create your own future. And so how do you do it? You take what's happening right now with all the media circus that's going on. Every time an event happens, and by the way, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss a few of these things, these uh, shootings that have been happening so that you don't get caught up in the mob mentality that's been happening right now. So anyway, uh, don't be a sheep, okay? Apply to these jobs, start your career, start your future, earn great benefits, earn great pay, job security, right? Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Keep repeating that to yourself, right? So again, the sheep, 
the majority of the people that follow the, the fake news or whatever, uh, they're going to listen to uh, all the crap on the news and it's going to sway them from applying to law enforcement jobs. But you are not, you are not part of that sheep uh, flock. You're, you know there's opportunity there, right? So go after it, continue sending me notes, continue, uh, continue uh, reaching out to me with uh, you know, asking for advice. Um, I am in the process of mentoring approximately seven um, full, full blown uh, persons who are going for law enforcement positions. Two of them just got full time employment and I have a feeling that these other seven will definitely get full time employment. Again, your goal is to go after opportunity. So let's switch gears and spend the last part of this video talking about different uh, situations that have happened uh, on the news and, uh, and, and what is my opinion on those situations, right? First off, the George Floyd, uh, that officer screwed up. He shouldn't have uh, you know, rested on George Floyd like he did. But let's not forget that George Floyd resisted arrest, right? George Floyd resisted arrest. So, you know, enough said. If you're, if you're one of my students, you've been in my classes, you know without law, there will be lawlessness. Without rules, there'd be chaos. And so, uh, that's all I can say about that. Okay, let's flip the page. Uh, we had the shooting with the, the lady officer who pulled out her uh, taser, thinking it was her taser, but she pulled out her gun and then she ended up uh, shooting the driver one time and then he died from those injuries. So let's talk about that. Uh, that reminds me of something that happened 10 years ago with the uh, BART police where on New Year's Eve, uh, there's a tradition apparently over there uh, with some of the, the kids, you know, the, the, the homeless kids or whatever, out of control kids, they get on the, on the BART train and they create uh, a ruckus, they create a disturbance. So BART police responded, everyone was complying except this one individual the officer went up to that individual with the, what he thinking what was his uh, dart or his uh, taser, and then uh, he shot the taser. Ended up being his gun. The boy died. The officer went to prison. It was a mistake. All of us in law enforcement learned from that. Uh, we switched our taser from the gun side. In my in my case, I'm a right-handed person, to the left side. Right. So to maybe give you that extra step so that you do understand that you're holding a gun versus a taser. Unfortunately, you know, that, that recent officer, female officer made a mistake and now she's going, she's getting charged and so she may be going to jail for what she did. Okay, but uh, let's pause right now and, and I want to remind you of something. This country, right, this country has 336 million people, 336 million people. We have over, a million two hundred thousand law enforcement staff working full-time in this country doing great work and I'm not saying that there isn't some bad apples I know from personal experience there's some there's some really bad apples in some of these organizations and we're just trying to weed those bad apples out you're not one of them you are a uh, straight level-headed educated individual who's trying to get a full-time job who wants to get some job security and earn great pay and great benefits. So let's continue on with a couple more of these scenarios. So before we leave the, the, the last officer that got into a shooting, don't follow mob mentality. Think about what happened. They pulled over a car for stuff hanging from the rearview mirror, which is illegal in that state and in California. She's training an uh, African-American officer. He's the one that makes contact. She stands back. There's body cameras to verify all this. And, uh, and they run a warrants check on the driver and the driver comes back with a confirmed warrant for dangerous weapons. I want you to think about this. The driver had a outstanding warrant confirmed for dangerous weapons. Now, what is a warrant? Some of you maybe not know this, but a warrant is an order from the judge ordering you, the peace officer, to take that person into custody. And so you don't have a choice. You have a duty, it's an order from a judge ordering you to take the person into custody. So uh, the officer, the training officer gets, gets the driver out and then starts to put him in, in you know, handcuffs. The driver you know, wrestles his way out of the officer's control, resisting arrest, gets in the car, 
uh, puts the car in drive, causing the, the lady officer to go around and make the mistake of shooting him with her handgun instead of her taser, and then the, the, uh, the driver takes off. Now, notice how the news does not say anything about how the driver had a warrant for our dangerous weapons. Think about this for a second. Why doesn't the news tell you that this person had a warrant for dangerous weapons for their arrest? Because they want to take you like the sheep that you could be if you follow the flock, right? And you ignore that. So, did the guy resist arrest? Yes. Had the guy complied, what would have happened? He would have gone to jail for that warrant. And then that, those officers would have gone to the next call. The other call that I want to bring up is the uh, colonel, lieutenant colonel, who was in uniform, all right, in the military, and he was in a black Tahoe with no license plates at nighttime, and the police officers hit the lights on him, and he drove for five blocks without stopping. Five blocks, lights and siren. Then he pulls over into the gas station, right? where it's lit, where he feels safer, which is totally understandable. That's happened to me several times. You know, at nighttime, especially female drivers feel more comfortable pulling over in a well-lit area versus a dark area. So, you know what, so far, no problem. But now, once he's there at the gas station and the officers order him out of the car, he doesn't get out of the car, which falls under resisting arrest, right? Falls under impeding an officer's investigation, etc. So he stays in the car, he puts his hands out the window, he starts recording. Of course, everyone here, uh, everyone now, you know, like, I wanna make money from the city. I wanna make money from the county. I'm gonna make millions. Think about this for a second. And this is, this is straight cut. This is not sugarcoating anything. This is not, and so he stays in the car. He puts his hands up. He's a lieutenant colonel. He knows exactly what he's doing. Now, one of the officers breaks the, the threshold. We call it a threshold when you do a felony stop and you go between the suspect's car and your car, you, you, the officer, kind of a naive, uh, lack of officer safety officer, uh, walks right up there and threatens to mace him. Now, you're not supposed to mace someone unless they are creating a danger to your safety. If this guy's in the car, he's got his hands up and uh, you're telling him you're gonna mace him, like, why are you gonna mace him? You know, get some more officers there you know, pull the guy out of the car, extricate him, you know, to extricate him out of the car because that's what the law allows you to do. But why mace him? Anyway, it was a bad decision on his part. It cost him his job. He got fired, right? And so now that lieutenant colonel is uh, going to be filing a lawsuit, which is no surprise, right? People want money for, for you know, against officers trying to do their job. Now, that department was only a seven officer department seven police officer department. So these two officers that pulled over, this lieutenant colonel, are two of seven in the entire department. So that officer got fired because of all the media coverage and how he screwed up. So he got fired. And so uh, the other officer now is gonna get some more training. You know, unfortunately, his name's probably gonna be plastered all over the news. But again, don't be uh, swayed by all these things. If anything, use them as training tools, right? how to escalate and de-escalate. One more thing as a class professor and former police officer, you have to know your department policy. You have to know your, the laws in your state. What can and can't you do? You cannot simply uh, wing things anymore, especially with body cameras and everything else, right? So you have to follow your training. You have to know the law. You have to know your department policy on how you respond to this, this, or that, okay? So anyway, I'm gonna stop there. I think uh, the video's been long enough. I hope that you have learned something from these last scenarios. As long as you're following department policy and guidelines and following the law, right, you will be fine. It's when you exceed the amount of force necessary to do your job that then you will get sued and, and that can happen in any career. Okay, so I'm gonna end the video. Uh, please continue to send me uh, ideas for videos, uh, suggestions, comments, uh, or questions, right? And I, my goal, and I told you this before, is to see you guys succeed. So, so the biggest reward that I have as a current uh, college professor and former police officer is to see you guys get your education, 
obtain a stable job, a good paying job and public service so that you'll have an amazing retirement and a good and prosperous uh, family life. Okay, thank you for listening. I love you guys. Please stay safe and uh, we'll see you soon.